Okay, we're to the point now that our paper has been considered by the journal and you get that letter from the editor saying, accept it. One of the very final things that you do is you read proofs. This is essentially your last opportunity to catch problems. So we need to deal with this effectively. Essentially, as soon as you sign off on the proofs, um, the journal is free to go ahead and publish it. And so any errors that are not detected at the proof stage are your fault and they're not the journal's problem. So you need to check the entire proof in very, very, very careful detail. Um, out of experience, I would suggest you put careful attention to equations, tables, literature cited, essentially anywhere where you have to concentrate. And we've already talked about all of these things. Uh, essentially, when you have, for example, a big literature cited section, that's a place where errors will accumulate. Uh, some people even take the proofs and read the whole manuscript from end to beginning, backwards. Because otherwise, if you're reading forwards, your eye can jump from word to word and to word to word. Uh, so it's time consuming, but a very good way to do it can literally be to read your paper backwards. So we already talked about the, this um, markup coding. Um, and again, you need to make sure you're using the right codes for that particular journal. But also you need to be very consistent and be very, very clear about the markups you do. I'm going to show you some examples. So here are proofs of a, a book chapter that I recently participated in. And basically, we've got, we've got some problems here. We're all biologists. And so the last thing we want to see is scientific names that are not italicized. Or, for example, a title that's wrong, Biodiversity Informatics, a critical to understand and conserve biodiversity. Something's missing. So these are big problems. We really don't want to see this kind of problem at the proof stage. Here are some more detail level uh, corrections. In this case, diacritical marks on uh, Mexican authors named accents and umlauts. Uh, or here we have a verb agreement problem. A total were collected. No, nope. a ter total was collected. And notice that I'm very careful. I try my best to write clearly, and I oftentimes will put a check mark out in the in the margin, so that the person who is making the corrections on the on the final version can. Um, can appreciate that there are, for example, here, three changes to be made. Sometimes the changes that you are wishing to see on the proofs are harder to uh, express. And so I'll do things like put in a note, split as endoparasite uh, versus endoparasite. Uh, but be very careful that this doesn't get interpreted as an insertion. Increasingly, uh, proof markup is being done electronically. And again, you need to be very clear uh, about what it is you want to be corrected. So just be painfully clear at this stage. So this, this stage of correcting proof, again, be very, very clear. And things like this may be very difficult to spot the problems. For example, here is a name that looks perfectly reasonable, but guess what? It actually has two ends. And only by concentrating and reading very, very clearly can you catch all of these last details. 